welcome back to Cooking on an Arrowboat. Yes, you join me once again in the galley. You may be asking, what are you cooking today, Trev? Well, to keep up with sort of the winter classic comfort foods that we all love and enjoy on a cold winter's night, and it's damp and wet outside at the moment, so it's a great day to cook again, I'm doing a beef stew. So I have my diced beef here. Now this meal is actually going to be quite expensive. They didn't have any of the small containers of diced beef when I was in Audi yesterday. They only had the 700 gram packets. So this is a lot of meat. So it's going to do me probably about four meals. Oh well, just what I like beef stew, isn't it? So once again, I'm going to do it my standard way. I've got my plastic bag. I've got some flour some dried mixed herbs, pepper, salt, and mustard powder. Into the baggie that goes. Give that a little shake up just so it's all mixed. And now in with my beef. And give that a good coating. This should do. So there we go, that's uh, all coated. I'm using the wok because it's deep and quite convenient for cooking something like this in. In my wok at the moment, I have some beef dripping. Probably no, I don't like using regular sort of cooking oils, vegetable oil and corn oil and all those, well, I call them disgusting, but there you go. So pure beef dripping, much nicer. And as I'm cooking beef, Beef dripping should work. So let's get that warming up. I might not have quite enough actually. I'm just going to get a bit more. I forgot how much meat there was. So I'm just going to add a little bit more beef dripping to that. We want it to fry. There we go. So as we just melt that off, that's um, just warming that up. Of course I can fry this at quite a high heat today because I'm using beef dripping. Now the beef has soaked up just about all the uh, flour and everything in there today so I'm just going to tip the whole lot in only because I want to get it all in there quickly and uh, so I can get it stirring. So in it goes. I say there's a lot of beef there already hear that sizzling away. Just want to brown this off, I'm just trying to get it down into the pan as much as possible, so I'm brown it as much as possible all at once. I probably should have done it in two lots, so there's a lot of beef here. Actually, what I probably should have done was to split the beef down and put half of it in the freezer. That's okay. Meanwhile, whilst that's sizzling away, this is what I'm going to be adding to it. I've got a very large potato diced up there. I it a little while ago, it's starting to brown off. The problem with prepping things before you cook the savory and what the jewelry prep work. Uh, in here, there's some chanterey carrots, which I've just washed and uh, trimmed. Some green beans. And I've got some broccoli, which I was going to have uh, tomorrow, probably. Anyway, I've diced up the stalks. In here, we have a sweet potato and a parsnip. A bouquet garnet from the garden, of course, the herb garden at the back or off the back deck and an onion and a green pepper now I bought this pepper in one of those packs where you get all the multi peppers in I'm not a big fan of green peppers but they go great in the stew so hence it's going in here for that also one of my favourite squads for thickener is musty peas and a can of Banks's Mild Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a, a steak 
and L do basically. Some tomato puree. My good old favourite, the old Oxo cube. And one clove of garlic, diced quite roughly. I should really just turn every bit separately in the tongs, so but it's going to take forever. And I might be moving the boat this afternoon yet, so it's starting to dry up out there. So if I can get this ready and on the stove, then I can make a move. Let's try it away again. Let's almost finish browning that off now. But before it does finish, I'm going to add my onion and peppers. And give those a good stirring. I'm just going to basically saute off those onions and peppers. They cook just to sweeten them up a little bit. They, they just cook so much nicer that way. Well, I've got my saucepan ready. I'm using this one because it fits on my stove nicely. And in there, I'm going to start just adding the vegetables. Uh, they can be in here ready to go. So I'm just going to tip them all in there. Okay, garni can go in, and all my vegetables. Do it this way, I make a lot of washing up, you know. Lots of dishes to do. And we'll also put my tin of mushy peas straight in here. When they go. Let's get every last drop of goodness out. I'll have some of my beer swirl it around. There we go, that goes in as well. This is almost where I want it. The onions are spreaded down quite nicely and so has the green pepper. I haven't exactly fried them, I've just sort of sauteed them and softened them up. Now I'm going to add my garlic. Just give that a few seconds to cook off. I didn't put it in earlier because I don't want to burn it. There's nothing worse than burnt garlic. It's so bitter and nasty. And now add my oxo cube. I might add another one later. I'll see how it goes. So I crumble that in. Let's saw that in. Also add a little bit of tomato puree. We get it in tubes in the UK. I know in the US a lot of the time it comes in cans. So you wouldn't want a whole can. And this is like triple strength or something in the tube. We're just gonna mix that in. Then I'm gonna add some of the beer. which will start to thicken the sauce straight away with the flour on the meat that will start to thicken up you see it thickening there already now to add that all into the saucepan turn that off hope it all fits in there This is going to be a lot of food here. Yeah, I wish I could have got the smaller thing of um, beef, but there you go. I should have taken some out. Never mind. It's written in there. I'm just going to return that back to the heat. I've turned it off. I shouldn't have bothered. I'm going to add some more of the beer. bring that beer to the boil 
You may be wondering why I'm heating up the beer. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, to, to glaze the pan, so I get all the good yeast off of it. And secondly, to cook the alcohol out. I don't want this dish tasting of alcohol. I do want it tasting using the flavour of the beer to enhance the taste. So by just heating the beer up, we're going to drive off the alcohol and we're going to just keep that flavour and just intensify it a little bit. Yeah, I've got the pan here just about deglazed now. I can't feel too much on the bottom as I'm running the wooden spoon around it. There's a little bit there. Off, there we go. Now I've only currently used about half that can of beer. I may need to add some of it later and if I do, I will do the same. I should actually put it in here, boil it off to get rid of the alcohol first. So we'll add that now to here. Well, I can tell straight away, it's definitely going to need more. So I'm going to finish off and do the rest of the can as well. So I'll just put the rest of the can in there. Now when I've actually got all of this liquid into my saucepan, I'm going to actually put it on back on the stove for a few moments in the saucepan just to bring it to the boil. Reason being is, my fire is not particularly hot today, it's not cold in the boat, so I've only really got it ticking over. Well, as you should be able to see there, I've now brought that beer back up to a boil here. It's been boiling there for a, a few seconds. So that should have been enough to drive the alcohol off. A lot of the fizzing is just the CO2 in the beer coming off. Once again, we'll add that into here. That looks better. It's now about three quarters full. Let's put that out of the way over there for a moment. We'll bring this to the stove. Right, so I've just put this on the stove now. You can see the liquid just about underneath the top of the all the meats and vegetables there. I'm just going to bring that to the boil now. And then we're going to transfer it to the log burner. There's one thing about it that will drop down slightly because when the vegetables all start to cook, they take up less space, if you know what I mean, as they start to soften up. And it will sink probably by about half an inch. All the vegetables were cold when I put them in there, so it's going to take a little while now to bring that back to the boil. Right, so I've got that back to a boil. I brought it to the boil once already, and I gave it a couple of good stirs, and brought it back to the boil again, stirred it again, and I've just brought it back to the boil again. So now I know it should be hot all the way through, and not just around the edges where the flames from the gas are hitting. So we're going to take that off now, and go and put it on the stove. So here it is on the stove. Once again, I couldn't show you me carrying it up here. Um, I can't carry that pot and the camera at the same time. The fan's just about turning and you can see the temperature thingy there. It says it's 150 C, about 300 Fahrenheit, which is quite low. I, quite often have this fire running up around about 500 Fahrenheit or 400 Fahrenheit anyway around about 200 or so C Celsius so it's just continuing now I can just see a few odd bubbles coming up that's perfect according to my temperature gauge there it's already 22.2 in the boat so I don't need the fire blasting out and it's quarters of one Right, so I've just taken my stew off the stove, off the wood burner. I've just sat it on top of the hob here for the moment. So, let's see how it's doing, shall we? Steaming. It looks good, doesn't it? Nice consistency. I like that. Go for a taste test, I guess. As I say, there's probably enough here for four people. Let's hope that's in the shot. It's a big bowlful. I'm hungry. Well, it's just about 5 p.m. I believe I put it on the stove at one o'clock, so it's had four hours. Let's see how it's done. A little taster of the gravy first. Oh, we can taste all the vegetables in the gravy. 
perhaps I put too many carrots in actually. Carrot undoubtedly tastes straight away, but then, okay, that goes away and all the herbs start coming through and some pepperiness from the pepper I added. Rather good. There's a try a piece of the meat. It's hot. Oh, so tender. Mm. You can suck the meat apart. Oh, that's good. The beer has actually flavoured the meat. It's given it a good flavour, I really must say. Yeah, well, I'm ready to sit down and have this. I had breakfast at half seven this morning. Two slices of the toast, and then it's now just after five. So I'm going to enjoy this. Of course, a big thank you goes out to all you wonderful people out there, all you subscribers, PayPal, Patreon, Super Thanks, channel members and everybody that supports the channel in any which way you do i really appreciate it all perhaps you can help me out all you lot which aren't subscribed that watch the channel how about giving me a christmas present and getting me to 3000 subscribers by christmas that would be a big help and don't forget to share the video and click the like button all those things help to promote my videos elsewhere on youtube that just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching trevor out and by the way i know i'm a mess i've just been doing wood and all that sort of thing since i moved or firewood haven't shaved today yeah sorry about that but it's life on an arrowboat.